Okay, a piston and cylinder kit has arrived, so let's start by getting rid of some of the inexplicable amount of hay that has accumulated in the garage for some reason. Next, I think we'll get rid of the um, leftover gasket on the main engine case. Next thing is just to drain the oil because we're going to pop the stator casing off. Now, if you're wondering why I've pulled the stator case, it's because I'm 99.9% .9 sure, looking at the parts diagram, that when the timing chain tensioner came out, it dropped a washer that fell down into the casing here, behind here, and I really hope is going to be at the bottom. In fact, I think I can see it. Um, if it's not there, I'm happy. If it is there and I can get it out, I'm happy. Didn't want to leave anything to chance, don't want to rebuild it and then suck up a washer and destroy it almost instantaneously. So uh, I'm just going to go and get the magnet and see if I can find anything down here. If not, I've got a new gasket. We'll pop that on. Although it looks like we might be able to reuse the old one, famous last words, um, and we'll take it from there. There you go. That's why we do stupid things like double check. That was right on the edge of finding its way down the hole into the very bottom of the engine casing where we wouldn't have been able to get it. So even just running that would have put us in a bad place. Should we get on and put the engine back together now? Okay, after a few brief rounds with uh, an uncooperative gasket and uh, also the timing chain which decided to jump off of the lower sprocket so I had to fish that back on because you can't get to it from under here. I put this back on loosely because I'm firmly of the opinion I'm going to drop something. Um, but yeah, now it is time to replace the O-rings on the jug. Or I suppose install them because we've got a new jug. Which is down here. Um, yeah, we'll install those. And we'll get the uh, piston with its rings on it into the bottom of the ball. So that as we hover it over we can... Um, install the piston, put the pin in, put the clips in. That's gonna be quite a juggle, so I'm not sure how much of it you're gonna see. And then we can push the whole lot home. So wish me luck. Okay, I haven't had a brief heart attack and um, trying to remember where I left these, which are the dowel pins for the head and wherein that I'd sent them to the machine shop. Along with the head, um, it turns out they're all organized perfectly in a decent place. Okay, apologies for that. Brief interruption from the neighbor. Kids threw their ball over the back fence. Um, we had a good chat about motorbikes in the meantime. It's the simple things. So uh, next thing is piston rings um, and checking the gaps on them before we install them. Not that it matters because we're going to install them anyway. <laughs> um, this shiny ring here is the top ring. It's a Chinese ring um, or sourced from China. I knew the piston and ring manufacturer but it just says you might be able to see it there, DY, if you're watching in high enough quality. So this is the top ring. Easy to remember. Um, this other ring is marked D in slightly bigger font, actually. On this side, you may see it, you may not. There's that little silver speck there. There's the second ring, and it's black. <clears throat> so we want to measure this tolerance here when it's in the cylinder. So... Before we do anything, let's um, lube up so that we don't ruin anything. And we're just going to uh, suggest this ring into the cylinder. Okay, once we've got it in, we'll use the piston 
um, just to push it down. I'm just going to use a, a ridge on the piston to make sure it's straight. And then at some point around here, um, we'll find the break in the ring, the gap in the ring. Hopefully, well, that does seem to have disappeared. Okay, so I've just briefly brought the ring right up to the top for you. This is not how you should do it, but it, it serves as a good opportunity to show you. This is where the gap is, and um, on the piece of cardboard of truth are the measurements for the top, second, and oil ring. Um, the gap needs to be between these two numbers, basically. So I've got uh, 0.15 in the feeler gauge, um, and I cannot fit that in that gap, no matter whether it's up at the top of the cylinder or pushed down by the piston. So it actually closes up slightly as it goes down. Um, I can barely find the gap, although I know it's there. So that means we need to file the rings um, and just open that gap up a little bit until it's suitable. Okay, that's the top ring and you can probably just see the gap there. I can easily get the 0.15. I can just about squeeze the 20 and the 30 won't go. So we're somewhere between 0.15 and 0.20 and that's just about right for me that's sort of in the middle of the specs this isn't one of those things where you necessarily want it um to be as tight as possible because uh, just it's to do with when these heat up and what you don't want to do is make it so that when the engine gets really hot maybe even out of tolerance hot um that it um these bind up and shatter the rings and blow your engine up so just somewhere comfortably in the middle of the range is where i like to be also, when you're doing this, do it with a hand file, not power tools, unless you're extremely deft. Um, take too much off, got to buy a new ring. Okay, we'll move on to the second one now. Okay, the second ring is done. Might want to put a little more distance on that. Didn't know if you saw any of that. Okay, that's ring number two. And that's the 20, so we're good there. Uh, last thing is just the oil rings so the oil rings are three parts there's um two rings and like a concertinaed piece that goes in between them they have different specs it's 0.3 to 0.9 so it's a little bit wider i'd say we um shoot for 0.4 at the moment there's um next to zero gap on these So I'll go away and sort those out and be back in a moment. Okay, both of the oil rings now have the same gap in them. These are much more awkward to deal with because they are thin and so they don't stay where you put them. And also they cut much quicker, so just be aware of that. Uh, maybe do the oil rings first while you're being ginger about it because um, it's much easier to take material off of these. Also when you do it, just take care to make sure you don't leave any burrs or sharp edges on the gap. I think it's time we put these in the piston. Just lay that in the ring, groove, and uh, bring it round. That's one down. So for the next bit, we need the um, this here. Something to note about uh, piston rings, actually, before we go any further, is you may well not be able to see this at all on camera, but if you look at this end profile of the ring here, one corner may be chamfered. Um, if the corner is chamfered, it has to face up. So it's very likely not the case on these oil rings. Sometimes they'll also have a, a dot that shows you which way is up. Although, depending on the ring manufacturer, sometimes the dot can be down. Um, but the oil rings are identical on this piston anyway. Um, but if there is a chamfer it needs to face up it's so that as compression happens and hits the rings it forces them out and makes a better seal rather than the other way around never remember the name for all the different rings but uh, i think this is the scraper we need to make sure it goes above that ring we just put on then we'll put another ring on on top of it that was a renault 5 that just went past as for putting the other rings on i've done one this is relatively easy this black ring doesn't have a way up, but I've put it with the stamping facing up because 
that's just a convention. As for this ring, this is the top ring, the compression ring, I think. Um, we need to take a look at this one. Um, and hopefully I can show you. The camera really doesn't want to focus. You might just see there, if you're watching in high enough depth, there's a bevel on the ring. So we want that facing up. Um, and with that facing up, that means that the markings on this ring are also facing up, which is kind of a convention. Um, and that's what I've used to position the other ring. I've got the markings facing up on both, because if they do on the top one, they probably do on the lower one. So to get a piston ring on, um, and I recorded this once with the other ring, but uh, forgot to hit record. Just get one side of it with your thumb. Gently work it round. This is harder with bigger pistons and tougher rings, but on this little bike engine it's easy. And just work it round until it drops on. The only other thing we need to do is um, take note of where the gaps in these rings are and make sure that they're 120 degrees out with each other. More of an issue on two strokes. Um, and the other thing is just to take note of this IN and the dot here. Um, that's going to determine which way around we put the piston on the engine. Other than that, I've got the head here. I'm going to give it a really good clean. Um, I've already cleaned the bottom here and put in this base O-ring. And then there's um, two dowels to go here. And there's an O-ring on the one that's the oil gallery as well that fits into a recess on the bottom of the engine. Just going to sort all of those bits and bobs out. Make sure everything's nice and clean. Uh, there was a bit of polystyrene down the oil gallery hole that um, must have happened while it was in transit so just stuff like that give everything a really good look over take care be careful make sure that um, everything that could go wrong has been accounted for so i'll go and get on with that now okay we're gonna pop the piston in now so looking at the engine like this um, the exhaust is on this side so the exhaust is now on this side and we want this dot to be exhaust facing and IN to be inlet facing. So we've made sure that the rings are not in phase as it were um, and we're going to place this and there are ring compressor tools that you can use to do this um, but again in the case of our particularly small engine it's easy enough and you might not be able to see this for me to just run my nail around the outside compressing the ring into the piston as I go don't force it just um, slowly but surely okay there's one ring in sorry I'm knocking you about all over the place I'll find the gap on the other one because it gives us a good visual indication of what's going on Okay, and so sort of carry on like that essentially until you get the piston in. And don't forget, while you're moving it around, you want to make sure that the um, inlet and exhaust markings stay in the right places. Okay, the piston is in now, and I've just pushed it up and down on the ball. You can see a nice pattern of the lube has been left behind. Just give it a good visual inspection, make sure there's no scratches or anything that might indicate a ring is broken make sure the pistons aligned um, and then we're nearly ready to put this back on the bike what we've got to do now is get it aligned get it like this and we're going to push the piston back out not so far the rings come out but just far enough that we can see the ends of the hole for the pin okay so you want to now decide what way around you're going to be working on the bike um so it's going to be like this for me and so the side facing away is going to be that hole there so if I flip it over I'm going to want to put one of the circlips that holds the piston into this hole and then when we get everything over to the bike we're going to align it we're going to push the pin through and we'll put the other circlip in on the side that's facing us make sense these are a little horror if you get this wrong it will go flying across the workshop um, I was always taught to go with the open end in first of course the piston is going to want to move around this is the easier side because the pin isn't in yet and we're not working over the open engine casing so we just push that into place it's not quite gone home so just make sure 
there we go it's completely home and I always try to make sure the gap is opposite the the little cut here that's designed to help us get it out I'm just going to check make sure it's in the groove all the way around it's not going to go anywhere if that lets go your engine's toast so looks good to me we're nearly ready to pop this whole ensemble on the bike so as we said before the um, dowels that go in here are already on the bike and then the only other thing we have to worry about is that um, one of these I think it's this one is the oil channel that lets oil come up to the top of the engine um, and so we need to put an o-ring in the block um, that that's going to make down against you can see the rest of these are chamfered but this one isn't also frustratingly has paint on it I don't know if that'll be a problem or not I don't want to take anything too abrasive to this because um, that's just asking to wreck things. So I'm just going to go away, take a second, have a look at all of this, make sure that I'm not doing anything catastrophically stupid, and then we'll put this together. This may be one of the most stressful things I ever choose to do on camera. You're quite far away and zoomed in, so if the image is a little weird, that's why. I've got the pin halfway in on that side. Okay, one. The pin is in, the wrist pin or gudgeon pin, depending on your affiliation. And so now what we need to do is to get the um, other circlip in on this side. Now for the love of all things, this can wreck your engine building experience. Make sure there is no way that that obnoxious little clip can find its way down into the guts of your engine if and when it decides it wants to take an unscheduled trip. Let me just reiterate once more, make sure the engine is covered. You may or may not be able to see anything, but the clip is now in. I'm just gonna check that seated and I'll bring you back. Okay, the pin's in. I've taken the rag away, which does risk crap falling in the engine. But we're just going to do a couple of things now. One of which is going to be to pull this timing chain up through the cylinder. Like so. It's quite important to make sure you keep tension on this because, in my experience, it has a habit of jumping off of the cog at the bottom and we're just gonna gently as we can muster bring that down a little bit further so that we can check out the gasket make sure it's in the right place make sure that rear o-ring that I don't know if you can quite see the back there make sure that's still in place yep and I think we can um, press home like so that is the new cylinder on Okay, other time and chain guide is back in, time and chain tensioner is out. The dowel pins, new rubbers and the head gasket, which is now a copper one, are on. And I've got the head here, just off camera. We're going to have to do a bit of joggling here. Because the timing chain needs to go on another odyssey up through the uh, 
head and out of the hole and be retained out of the hole in a way that um, it stays tight but we can also manipulate it to get it onto the uh, the sprocket we also need to take care as we're doing this to make sure that this goes into its appropriate um, I don't know what you'd call it really into the appropriate hole in the head that it belongs in so this is going to be a little gawky and awkward to watch I expect Should also bring in the torch to make sure that the uh, time and chain guide is where it's supposed to be, and it is. That's good. We can take a look down there, make sure the time and chain is still where it needs to be. Okay, the head's on and loosely tightened down, all the hardware's in place. It's just loosely tightened down enough that we can do the timing if we drop the chain. We can take it back off and once we've got the sprocket on um, and the timing sorted out, we'll bolt everything down to spec, I think. But uh, first, I've got to pop on these brackets um, that go here and I've just stuffed a rag in because there are small bolts that look like they want to um, drop down into the engine. Okay, I've got that mostly done up now. Um, I've got the other ratchet down here jammed against the foot peg. Um, I'll get the torque wrench out and take that properly to spec in a moment. Um, but first of all, let's get the rest of the hardware for the head bolted down and the tensioner in um, so that when we get the torque wrench out, we can. Um, properly sort out all of these different bolts that need taken to torque spec. Okay, the hardware's a bit tighter, um, but everything's otherwise, as you saw it, we're still yet to tension this. Um, but I want to show you the cam chain tensioner. So this was previously automatic, um, but this cylinder head is a later one, so it has... Sorry, this was previously manual, but this cylinder head's a later one, so it has the automatic tensioner. Um, I might replace this with a, a manual kick, so I'm told these aren't necessarily brilliant, but basically we screw this in until it bottoms out. Then it comes with a little key. Uh, the manual actually tells you to do this with the screwdriver, but it comes with a little key that you can pop in. And it... Um, sticks into these crenellations, I suppose you'd call them. You can see there, hopefully. And that keeps the tensioner withdrawn, I suppose is the right word. 
while you pop it in. Get the bolts done up. Okay, now we can pull that out and hopefully... Well, it looks like we've hit a snag. The um, automatic tensioner doesn't appear to be as long as the manual one. And so it's not making contact with the... Uh, that thing, <laughs> the cam chain guide. I think the holes on the side of the head are a different size for the two different tensioners. <clears throat> yeah, that looks fully extended. Just going to go back to the bench and compare that to the manual one. Well, sorry ladies and gents, it's um, getting late and uh, that cam chain tensioner, I just picked up the old one and sort of offered it up. The old one is considerably longer, so I'm either missing a few bits or the tensioning arms that go inside. I can't remember the word for them. I read it about five minutes ago. I think they're slightly different. Um, probably got more of a nub in on the back to press against the auto tensioner. I'm going to have to go back to the workshop manuals, find out the part number differences. They're going to be another one of those parts that seemingly rocking horse poo. So I've got to do that. There's no way I'm going to manage that tomorrow unless by some miracle somebody locally has one. But I didn't have much luck for that with the engine, so I doubt I'm going to have much luck um, for a very specific part like this timing part. So that's um, Dreams of Journey Up the Seine done for. I'll post another video when I've got the right parts to sort this out. Hopefully it's not too long. Have a good evening. Ta.